Simon Lunn is a local photographer who for many years has shared his work with TV Kojiko for use on our channel. It was many years ago that Simon first became interested in photography. I considered myself very lucky. I had uh, very motivated parents in terms of they were interested in the outdoors. And when I was a young lad, along with my brothers and sister, uh, we used to be taken on field trips throughout southern Ontario. And uh, also we lived on a farm for a while and there were woodlands nearby. And I used to, I, I started out, I was given a little brownie box camera and um, that started me going and combine that with getting into the outdoors and you start discovering things. And then a little later, um, I set up a dark room. My parents helped me get some equipment. In those days, we used film photography, of course, and it was pretty neat though, because you were able to see what developed right in front of your eyes in the middle of that dark room. That got me kind of hooked. And then I got into Boy Scouts and uh, they had a photography badge and so that got me motivated. And then from there, the university and you're going on field trips. Um, I was in uh, biology and so we were out all the time. And boy, you start discovering things and you want to take some of those uh, memories, not just in your brain, but back uh, as images, uh, capturing with photography. I think for me, probably, if I had to pick one thing that really got me cranked about photography, I was lucky enough to go on a, a photography workshop by a fellow by the name of Freeman Patterson in New Brunswick. He was in his 40s or 50s, but he was like a kid when he discovered things out there with his camera, and he passed that uh, enthusiasm on to all of us at the workshop. And uh, I learned a lot and experienced uh, the joy of photography, and that was one of the names of one of his first books uh, at that time, and that really got me going. Over the years, Simon has enjoyed many interesting experiences that led him to some very unique photographs. One that I took just a... Uh, um, a couple of years ago was right in my backyard. You know, for a group of photographs, I think I, I'm lucky enough to have woods around my house, even though I back onto a golf course, but it's, inc it's surprising the variety of life that a person can sometimes find in their own backyard. And I think a lot of pictures, my better pictures, have been taken right here at home. And um, this is an example of a screech owl that was sitting, for instance, in a wood duck nest box that I erected in my backyard. And I took my time because after first my wife t uh, noticed the owl in the box, it's 30 feet away from my living room window. It was sticking its head out, out the uh, hole in the box. I went out, I took a couple of, uh, a few quick shots, and then I settled down, I took my tripod, and I took my time. And I was there for at least five minutes, and during that time, a red squirrel, as you can see in this shot, this shot hasn't been altered, it's as it appeared, um, the, the squirrel climbed up the tree, the trunk of the tree, and onto the top of the, uh, the nest box, and was peering down at the, at, at the screech owl. And uh, two minutes after that, a, a white-breasted nuthatch did the same thing. So you never know what you're going to find, especially if you're patient. So I'm pretty proud of that shot. Uh, there are other pictures, the one of the fox with uh, the 11 kits. I've, I got marvelous pictures just by going back to this location a few times. I stayed in my car because it was near a road. I didn't want to disturb the animal. Uh, and so I was literally shooting from 250 feet away. And um, I don't have the biggest telephotos, uh, so I, I did what I could. And it's pretty amazing what I discovered, everything from the adult male uh, carrying a big fat muskrat in its mouth to feed the, the young ones to the kids playing around. Uh, those kinds of experiences are hard to duplicate. If you are interested in photography but don't know where to start, Simon shares these tips. Start with, um, don't start with too fancy a camera, unless you're given something really neat that wise. You don't have to start with the best. Um, even uh, cameras that will give you the ability to make large size prints uh, will not cost you more than one or two hundred dollars if you choose carefully. Uh, because of all the features that they have on. So, you know, it's, it's a natural thing to be carried away with equipment, but you don't have to start right from the very best. You can work your way through. Even with po point-and-shoot cameras, you can create marvelous images. Um, th a few things that I'd suggest. Don't worry too much about rules of photography. Uh, certainly, it's, it's useful to know a few, um, a few rules, but you can break them all the time. As an example, I come from a generation of photographers that we tried to, when we're taking landscapes, make a straight horizon. 
You see nowadays, um, everybody, um, especially younger people, take pictures at various angles and stuff, and I've started doing this a bit, and it, it's pretty neat. So let your creativity flow. I'd suggest not, um, don't always take pictures unless it's perhaps of special people, uh, people you know, um, which you can take pictures anytime, and they're going to be special photos. But if you want to really create neat images, be aware of lighting. Pick the times of day where your lighting is best and does the best for an image. And that would be, I'd suggest, in the early morning hours, any time before, if possible, 9 o'clock in the morning, because after that the light starts getting very contrasty. Or late in the afternoon and early evening. Um, or if you're doing special night photography, well, that's a whole other thing. This is Sean Wright reporting for The Source.